Hi, my name is Molly Crabapple. I'm an artist and a journalist. And in 2013, as a correspondent for Vice magazine, I traveled twice to Guantanamo Bay. When I was there, I covered both um, the 9-11 pretrial hearings of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, which are a bizarre and ludicrous form of legal proceeding that was invented by the Bush administration. I also covered um, the prisons, the clinic where at that point over a hundred men were being force fed every day. I um, interviewed people like a Muslim cultural consultant named Zach, who was hired to concoct religiously specific tortures. I interviewed soldiers, uh, pastors, and documented not just um, the prison and the trial, but also this bizarre life at Guantanamo Bay itself, which is this like, concocted bit of faux America that's built on this horseshoe-shaped piece of Cuba where everyone lives in this bizarre and delusional belief that it's a totally normal place. I documented Guantanamo Bay in a variety of ways. Uh, first, you know, I'm a journalist. I wrote two features about it. But also, I am an artist, and I'm someone who uses my sketchbook the way that a photojournalist would be using their camera. I take out my sketchbook and I draw what's in front of me, and I draw it fast, and I try to get it as accurately as I can, even if I am racing against time and I'm being tugged along by some escort and I have like three seconds to do it. If you're a photographer or a videographer, everything you do is subjected to censorship. You literally have a military escort right there looking through it. Um, whereas as an artist, I could literally draw around that. For instance, I wasn't allowed to draw people's faces when I was there. So I gave all of the soldiers these kind of blank, I, I wanna call them smiley faces, but more like blank, indifferent masks. And by doing that, I could draw scenes that a photographer wouldn't have been able to shoot. If you can't draw someone's face, there are different ways to, to deal with that in your drawing. One way is that you can, you know, draw them from the back or a silhouette or whatever. But the other thing is to make it really, 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 really obvious that you're not allowed to draw their face, right? Like, that's why I did those masks. That's why when I um, drew Zach, I had his face all like black scribbled out because you don't want to collaborate with the censorship. You want to be like, I am being censored. I am not allowed to show you this. So instead I'm going to show you the fact that I am not allowed to show you this. And that's something that um, I just tried to make real obvious in my work. Here's um, one of the drawings that I did. This is of a place in um, Guantanamo that's not used anymore. That's called Camp X-Ray. It's like a very uh, visually sinister place. You know, these are, these are cages that humans lived in under the absolutely burning sun. Um, and, you know, when I went there, no one's lived in Camp X-Ray for a really long time. It's all overgrown. And it's this strange thing of just sitting there with your sketchbook, you know, drawing with your, you know, pen amidst this place that, you know, in some ways has these like bucolic elements of any nature in Cuba, right? You know, the birds, you know, the sun. But in other ways, it just looks like a concentration camp. Well, the traditional role of a courtroom artist is to serve as a camera in a place where a camera can't be. I did something a little bit different. I, um, when I was doing my work in the courtroom, I was also trying to uh, capture um, the emotion of it, the intense surrealism of it, and the tragedy of it as well. The U.S. government did everything that they possibly could to uh, rob most of the people in Guantanamo Bay of identity. Most images of people in Guantanamo Bay, when they were finally released, were images that were uh, taken by the prison itself, right? They show people who have been made prisoners in prison outfits, you know, up against a white wall, people who, um, you know, might be like weak from hunger striking, people who have um, been through this incredibly brutalizing system. And that has a purpose too. Once you see someone looking like a prisoner, it's hard to conceive them of ever not being a prisoner, of ever being something else. What 
I tried to do with my work was I tried to show people like people. I tried to, you know, portray them with all of the, uh, you know, skill, all of the artistry that I would give to anyone else. I think that Guantanamo is um, one crime of American empire, but I think that there's like a straight through line between what America does in its prisons here and what America does in Guantanamo. I don't think that they're like separatable. Very often, um, the only hope that anyone has of getting out of prison once they have uh, a charge on them that, that's unjust is that there's a big public campaign around them, right? I think that in general, when it comes to prisoners of any kind, power just wants everyone else to forget about them. And what journalism can do is it can make it impossible to forget. That's, that's my hope. Mm-hmm.